everyone and welcome back. I'm YK Swedish Whiskey Girl and today we are reviewing Chivas Regal 12. So this is of course a blended whiskey, meaning it's made up with both green whiskies and single malts. And this particular one is 12 years old, meaning that both the green whiskies and the single malts have to be at least 12 years old, of course. So Chivas Regal was started by the Chivas Brothers in 1909 and they released a 25 year old blend and it's often considered to be the world's first luxurious blend. And I believe it was particularly in New York that this blend was established and became quite popular. And it wasn't until 1938 that this Chivas 12 came to be. Of course, Chivas is owned by Chivas Brothers, which is now owned by Pernod Ricard. So they have a few different distilleries around Scotland and of course other brands around the world. And of course it is Strath Isla up in Speyside, which is the spiritual home of Chivas. So it might be that that is the key component in this blend. And of course, Strath Isla is known for being a really picturesque and some people even say that it's the most beautiful distillery in Scotland and it is really stunning. Uh, I'll try and put a photo up here for you guys so you can see it. It has two different pagoda rooftops. I have to be careful with that word because I love saying pagoda for no really reason. It's just because it sounds a bit cute to say pagoda instead of saying pagoda. But of course the pagoda rooftops are a very kind of Scottish thing that you'll see on distilleries here because they're great for ventilation, not letting any rain in, but also making the air circulate in on the malting floors or at least on the old traditional malting floors when you used to use them a lot. I'm not going to get too technical in this video, but if you would like to hear more about pagoda rooftops and other kind of historic elements that people would use in distilleries, please let me know in the comments below and I'll try and do a video on that as well. And of course the Chivas brothers got their first royal warrant in 1843 when they served Queen Victoria at Balmoral Estate. Uh, so of course there are a lot of distilleries nowadays that kind of have the royal warrants and some have them in their name like Royal Lochnagar, Royal Brackla, but some like Lafroy they do have a royal warrant but they don't put it in the name. Of course the thing that got it all started in 1909 with the brand Chivas Regal was of course a 25 year old but nowadays they have a quite wide portfolio with lots of different ones. One of my absolute favourites today is the Zonara Oak, so the Japanese Oak Chivas Regal. And you can see here on the bottle that we have that it says established in 1801, but that was when the grocery store from the Chivas Brothers was established and not the actual whiskey. That didn't, the actual brand of the Chivas Regal didn't come around until 1909, but before that they had other blends as well. And I think it's so, so fascinating to read about these old blending houses and the Chivas Brothers alongside people like the Whiskey Barons, like Tom Dewars and the Dewars Brothers as well. Because it's just this fascinating idea that they owned a grocery store or they had luxurious goods or exotic goods and then started up blending whiskey because they previously blended tea and went over to doing that and got a consistency to the single malts and this all kind of lovely, I mean I love vintage stuff and just seeing all these old photos and hearing the stories from back in the days when these pioneers just started up their own companies and started blending whiskey, started selling it, they had their own ideas for how to market it. Uh, for example, the Chivas went to New York and started making it popular there um, and I, I just love learning more about it. So if you have any recommendations for perhaps books or films or online sites that talk more about the history of some of the blending houses or some of the pioneer whiskey makers, please put them in the comments below. I'm always searching for new sources and that would of course be much appreciated. But of course, let's get to nosing this one. This is so fruity and kind of that honey sweetness. The pear drops and maybe some honeydew lemon. Honey
yeah, it, the finish is very nice because it leaves that kind of lingering earthy note. So the first thing you get is that fruity, fresh, easygoing notes, and then it just lingers with you with this soft leather earthiness. But not a too long a finish, it kind of disappears again. But because it is so kind of juicy and fresh, it makes you just want to go back for another sip. Um, so maybe this will be a good one in the summer. Just to sit with, maybe make a highball, just have some, I don't know, maybe some Pellegrino lemonade and some ice and this and perhaps a bit of mint as well. It's interesting, going back to it now, you get this kind of caramel notes, the like caramel biscuity notes. It's a bit like maybe like shortbread with some caramel on it. Maybe like millionaire shortbread actually. Very sweet and easy going. I think you get that green element coming through. And that's what the sweetness is. It's just this kind of fresh and crisp sweetness that I tend to get from green whiskies. Yeah, yum. <laughs> I would of course love to hear what you think of Chippers Regal. Do you like the Chippers Regal 12? Is there another one in the range that is your favourite? Or perhaps it's another one of the single malls in Parnell Ricard's portfolio that is your favourite. I want to say a massive massive thank you to my wonderful Patreons that keep supporting me. You guys are amazing and I'm so so grateful that I have you. But as always, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Slend